Welcome back, Brewers. I'm Daniel with Keg King. Sometimes we get emails and uh, messages from uh, brewers out there that want to know a little bit more about a product or how it works or how far you can take it and what the maximum capacities are and all sorts of other things. Uh, and recently when we came out with the blue and the purple PRVs as uh, options for spunding valves on our pressure fermenter lineup, uh, we got a great uh, question from a brewer. Uh, I'll just read it to you. He said, uh, great idea about the new blue and purple PRVs being able to replace spunding valves. That saves a lot of the expense of getting into pressure fermenting. However, I'm worried about what would happen if Krausen or something clogged the PRV during fermentation. What then? Well, that's a really good question. What then? We got really interested and decided, all right, time for another nutty experiment. Okay, so what we've done here is we've loaded a bunch of dextrose and um, hit it with turbo yeast inside of a 35 liter snub nose inside of this um, old fridge body here. Um, we've now corked off the top of the PRV uh, so that it's just running into that gauge that you see there. That's that tubing. You'll actually see yeast moving up through the tubing and uh, it's probably going to kill that gauge at some point. But there was no other way to relieve pressure on this fermenter. So that gauge is basically hooked up to that PRV. You'll see the yeast moving through the line and everything. We started this on a Friday afternoon um, and uh, it was around five o'clock. So it went for about 19 hours. You can see it really starting to swell. Um, the tank is really holding in that pressure. Um, it was our expectation that it was probably gonna blow off the lid uh, or explode or rupture the tank. Uh, I've never seen yeast being this aggressive before. I uh, really thought that they were gonna shut down during fermentation. Now, I really need to stress, don't ever try this at home. Just don't, it's, it was dangerous. We were very safe in how we put this together because um, no one was around for this. Um, they would check in on it every, every once in a while. But yeah, don't ever try this at home. If you're making anything in any fermenter, you know to leave some headspace for the Krausen. Um, so obviously, this is under a lot of pressure right now. It's the next day, it's Saturday. Um, and it goes until about uh, 12 o'clock when we're really gonna see where this thing fails. Now we know that these burst at around 8.5 bar and we're now sitting somewhere close to 7.2 and you're gonna see the fail point happen just up here. Oh, they've moved the camera, yep. And it's kind of anticlimactic right there. You see where it just lost pressure. So what's actually happened is the lid uh, gave way, but it didn't blow off. It actually just blew the O-ring that sits in the neck and the collar that holds that O-ring and the whole lid assembly in place in the neck is actually still holding that. And that's exactly what we want to see it do. So this is exactly why you would never want to go with any other type of PET fermenter other than a Keg King one. The polymers of this plastic are fantastically strong and it's got to do with the process that we use to create them, which can't be replicated. So it's a really great outcome. We're really happy with the strength of the tanks and the performance of the lid and not blowing off and the collar to be able to hold it in place. Um, also really frightening about what turbo yeast does with sugar. So when you're making your hand sanitizer wash, be careful. Um, and also thanks to uh, Andy R. from Killsythe for the question. If you have questions, you can join Keg King Connect and ask them there. You can also get in touch with us at info at keg-king.com.au. If you like the video, hit like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time, brewers. Thanks for watching.